Are we off the air? Oh, okay. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's smart and he's a Jew He's an actor and an activist And wants to hear from you Hey everybody, welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart. I'm here today with my guests, both incredible singers. I both have listened to these people so many times. What's going on? I got Jake, our new producer on the show. Everyone give Jake a big hand. Hey Jason, how you doing man? Nice to see you. Yeah, nice. Jake Belcher and I worked together at Radio Titans for a year, and he's my new producer on the show, and I'm really excited to have him. But I really, I have to say, when I started reading about you, David Engel, and... Um, I want to say it right, Julie Garnier. Yes, That's right. yes, That's I want to it. say it right because I am constantly tweeted and Facebooked about how I pronounce everybody's <laughs> name wrong. That was perfection. Yes, well, th you're the only one that's ever said that. <laughs> no, no, you did mine right too. And uh, well, David Engel, how? That well, no, you, people do. It's Engel, yeah. Engels. And I say when I Engels. when I saw you in the waiting room, I said to myself, I uh, you know that I thought that I knew you, but I think I've seen your work so much that I felt like I know you, which happens all the time. And your your both of your voices are just I mean I saw I would listen to so much of your stuff deciding on which oh. one to play. You guys oh, such thanks. beautiful voices. I've always you know, the comedian always wants to sing, the actor always wants to be a comedian, the singer always wants to act, you know, and there all of us want to direct. And, <laughs> and we do. And you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's really exciting to have, you know, people that have been on Broadway on the show. I mean, and doing theater all over the country, because I've always wanted to be more, I was telling you, more of a theater guy. So I want to get this first off the, of the, the plate here. So on May 9th, you are doing a big thing called Stage. It's to Broadway from Hollywood with love. It's about Broadway songs that have gone to Hollywood. Other way around. Hollywood, Hollywood songs. Hollywood movies so that have, have been turned into Broadway shows and the songs from those shows. And backwards and forwards and backwards sure. and forwards because that's happened. Yeah. And the uh, uh, cast of people, I mean, you know, Loretta Devine, who I adore. Mm -hmm. uh, is this, uh, Ode? I can't say her name. Oba Baba Tunde. Is that from the Orange is the New Black? No. No, 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 no. He no, no, should no. be on that show. No, though. he's a, it's a, it's a guy. Oh, uh, it is. Yeah, okay. Oba Baba Tunde. Yeah. He's a Broadway actor. Oh, I know Amazing. his name. Amazing. Gregory yeah. Harrison, handsome, Sally... Uh, Kellerman and uh, Donna Pescow, Sally Struthers, I mean uh, Patricia Morrison, who I guess is just turning a hundred. Nancy yeah, Dussault, she just I've met J Carol Cook, I mean J Mary Jo Catlin. I mean the, the cast is some of the best names and Tony winners on Broadway. Mm -hmm. this is so, uh, how did they rope you guys into doing it, or you just wanted to do? Oh, it? rope! My gosh, it's, it's, it's an honor it's to it's do it. It's a privilege it's to do it. It really yeah. is. I've done about ten of them, <gasps> and it's just it's so nice to get asked, and it just. I don't know to be to be with these uh, great stars, be share the stage with them. It's just a real. It's a. Do you still your cap. do you still mm -hmm. learn from doing it? Because I still do. I still learn by watching other people act. I'm like an acting cinephile. Well, that's the thing we were just saying. You know, we like being early on in the show because then you can actually sit and watch and enjoy what they're doing. But often when you're late in the show, you're so focused that you don't get to watch to and watch. learn. Mm -hmm. But y yes, yeah, you know they're. They're incredible, and everybody, everybody's really focused when they're doing it, and it's their one little moment out there, and everybody shines, and it's always. So always everybody a sings one show. song, I'm guessing, <coughs> or does one number. Uh, yes. Okay, so let me ask a question. This is something I'm always interested. In. I remember when I was a kid, and I went to CBS right here in Beverly and uh, Fairfax, and I saw Maud being filmed in front of a live audience with B, B. Arthur, who mm -hmm. I thought was, you know, Broadway gal television icon and I remember she was standing off to the side and she was shaking her foot and I'll never forget it and she was you know she was going shaking her foot and shaking and just and you saw that she was nervous mm -hmm. getting ready to, to make an entrance on the show because for those at home that don't know a sitcom with three cameras in those days 
is done in front of a live yeah. audience. And they actually used the audience then. They didn't pepper it like they do now. And she was nervous. And I remember seeing that going, oh, my God, she's nervous. It's okay to be nervous. And that sort of changed me in life. I think I was, I was, I was a baby boy when I saw it. So do you see these other pe big people before? Now, you've done it ten times. Do you see them getting really nervous before? It doesn't seem that they are. If I always feel like... But right before they go on, I mean, would you see them when they're standing off in the wing? Or it manifests I itself in different <coughs> ways. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a shaking or a, right. you know, a stomach thing, but maybe it's like, you know... People telling people to be quiet, they need to focus. Like it, it manifests itself in different yeah. ways. Yeah, usually, think. well, they call you to the stage a number or two before yours, and you see them sitting there, either pacing or sitting, uh, and just getting focused before they go on. I don't think anybody just goes out there cavalierly, uh, not nervous. No. I and nervous is so the funny. thing. It's just kind of energized. I mean, I don't feel if I know what I'm doing, I don't go out there nervous. I just go out there focused and energized I, I don't go out there it's more of a butterflies in the <coughs> stomach excitement mm -hmm. than uh, you know unless you really don't know what you're doing but we're so prepared yeah. for this we have multiple rehearsals it's not like oh just pick a song and go out there and sing it it's I mean it oh this really oh no this well, is this show is very very well thought out it, it you know it's at the Saban Theater in Beverly Hills it's a big benefit it's gorgeous yeah it's for stunning. those who don't know what is it I saw Don Rickles there recently because I always wanted to see him he's one of my favorite all-time comics and I'd never seen him live and for me, you know, as a comedian, I can almost, what I will do is I'll get there a little early, watch the audience, and see what people are wearing, <laughs> clothes, because oh. that always tells you who they are, the way somebody dresses, and ages, and race, and sexual preferencing, everything for me. I look in the audience and see the dynamics of the audience, and then I can just turn around and talk to you and walk right on stage, because I've been doing it 30-something years. I don't have to... You know, though acting is different. Yes, what you do, I could never do. Just go out there and kind of punt and wing it. Oh my gosh, no! I have to be so. Rehearsed. Well, it's a it's a craft like anything <laughs> else. You have to you have well, you have to say what I say to kids that I mentor is, breathe, listen. Because your audience is your acting partner as a comedian. For me, I also do a lot of Don Rickles, Joan Rivers kind of things. I'm very interactive. I like to. I don't like to do a show that feels like it's theater. I don't want to just stand there and tell jokes. It bores me. Some people love it, but for me as a performer, it just doesn't interest me. So I think that that's my thing, and so I have to really, really listen. Do you use a notebook? Sometimes. Some, some but I use like a piece of paper with bullet points, but since mm -hmm. I'm older, I can't see them. So <laughs> but even when you have a script, you have to be listening to your audience. You can't just like As an actor? Through. Yes, of absolutely. You, you oh, yeah. You, you time everything off of, off of them how they're reacting to you. I do it as a singer, too. I mean, <coughs> sometimes I'll speed up. If, if I feel like I'm losing them, I'll speed up a tempo, and hopefully the musical it's director will follow me. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's the same across the board. Yeah, it is, just being live on stage. Do you ever feel like, I, as I watch The Voice sometimes, it's the only one of those shows that I like, but me now, too. I'm, but now I'm still not liking it, but I'm starting to not like it. Because why aren't you on The Voice? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why aren't you on The Voice? I've never auditioned That's who I'd rather see on The Voice because I want to see people that have been doing this for 20 years who really know what they're doing. I see too many people with their, you know, eyes in front they're of a like headlight. 15 uh, years old. Yeah, I'm not interested. You know, okay, so they have a cute they voice. there. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. I don't care. Oh, yeah, my mom really has an hearing. They want to discover stars. They don't yeah. want people who've just been doing I this I think but that show, the difference of that show is that what it was supposed to be. And that's what's the, disappointing the, about it. It's seasoned people so that, yeah. that people really should know I the world saw some people on there. They just... Uh, I, I got to tell you, I saw some people on there that I just thought were incredible in the first couple of years. And then occasionally you'll see someone slip through that's over a certain age. Usually the younger people are not that interesting. There's a, a sea of girls with long hair that all look the same that are wearing too much eye makeup. You know, and they s you can see they spend. But you see, what, what you see on the show is you see that moment when they can see that, hey, there's not enough passion in the song. And that's what I loved about you. In, in this one thing, and I'm going to show it. We're going to show this clip uh. from her doing her cabaret act. I think it's a cabaret act, and you're singing Don't Rain on My Parade. Oh, okay. Which is, I mean, you know, it's a song that's identified with one person yes. only, yeah. which is really hard. And I've never listened to her do it. What? Really? No, I won't do it. Oh, there's, there's a couple of songs that I do that are like my songs, but I won't, but they're synonymous with Barbara or Liz Calloway, well, and I've never actually heard them do it because let's let's I let's see this, <laughs> Miss Julie Garnier. <laughs>
don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around the cloud to rain on my parade. Don't tell me not to fly, I simply got you. If someone takes a spill, it's me and not you. Who told you are allowed to rain on my parade? I'll march my But whether I'm the rose of sheer perfection, a freckle on the nose of life's complexion, a cinder or the shiny apple of his eye, I gotta fly once, I gotta try once, only can die once, right, sir? Ooh, love is juicy, juicy, and you'll see, I gotta have my bite, sir. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a comer. I simply gotta march, my heart's a drummer. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. I gotta live and live now. Get what I want, I know how. One roll for the whole shebang. One throw, that bell will go clang. I own a target and wham. One shot, one gunshot, and bam! Hey, Studio City. Clapping in the sound booth. <laughs> so guys. never seen Barbara do it. Never seen her do this one. Song. So that I want. Well, I've I seen the film. Okay. So how do you? So you get, and you. What? And so what? But you, you obviously saw the movie before you knew you were going to sing the song, right? Yeah, I just don't remember. Oh, okay, I don't good. remember that. So want to get you on that. No, we're going to no, take a break, and we're going to be right back with Lisa, <laughs> with uh, Julie Gagne and uh, David Engel, my Broadway people on my Broadway show. We'll be back in just a moment with J uh, absolutely Jason Stewart. Thank you so much for listening. Please stay with us. The long running movie video game Don't leave it in the ground more Hey Geeks, we got big news Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV Is coming to T-Radio V Monday, October 6th And it'll be on every Monday from then on 7pm Until the apocalypse happens We're all eating by zombies Hi, I'm Bob Nelbandian, and be sure to watch my show, Inside Metal, which airs live every Tuesday from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T-Radio V. I'm going to be bringing in the greatest heavy metal artist live right here in the studio. Once again, every week at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, every Tuesday, right here at T-RadioV.com, Radio in TV. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? This your boy, Crazy Bone. Man, I'm the bum Keith G, man. And whenever you sitting at home and can't shake the monkey off your back... Yeah, yeah. ...then just know every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m., right. you can tune in to The Quick Fix and get your fix on, man. Right here on TRadioV.com, baby. Radio and TV. So how they gonna see us on the radio, then? Radio? I, I don't know. Or is it TV and radio? But it's, it's one it, of them. I gotta figure this radio and TV thing out though, bro. I don't Get understand. I'm gonna tell my mom what we, how she gonna see Get it us. together. Hey, Geeks, wake up. We got big news. I'm not gonna mumble this time. Geekscape, the long-running movie video game. Let me do one more. 
Hey geeks, we got big news! Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV is coming to T-Radio V Monday, October 6th. And it'll be on every Monday from then on, 7 p.m. Until the apocalypse happens, we're all eaten by zombies. Hi, I'm Bob Nelbanian. You know, it's a great story to tell. Inside Metal. Yeah, in like, when I'm on my deathbed. From 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard. I can talk about it on my deathbed. Hey, and we're back at Absolutely Jason Stewart with my guest here. Uh, are we back on camera? Yes, we are. We're having a little technical okay. difficulties today, but we will we'll, we'll plow through it. We're here with David Engel and Julie Gagné, and we're talking about you played uh, Tinkerbell. No, I not Tinkerbell. Or explain to me how this all works. You're in this Disney movie. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a sound-alike for Disney for, um, for various characters. One of them was um, a character called Lyria. She's um, one of the fairies in the Tinkerbell movie series, and um, she appears in Tinkerbell and the Lost Treasure. And so basically they'd hired this incredible voice actress, um, Gray Delisle, to, to voice her uh, a speaking voice and her singing voice. Um, but for some reason it just wasn't matching up. So they hired me to imitate or to sound alike her speaking voice as a singer. So they sent me her speaking voice, her saying the lines, and then they sent me the song. And they said, can you come in and audition sounding like vocally like her can you kind of tweak your voice I, th I always think like that I, I always think I'm doing something like somebody and I sound nothing like <laughs> like I, all the time I mean I do it all the time I still think for people all the time in a way to say something no one ever knows what I'm doing that's, that's I, I, I sound like nobody but myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I can't. I know I can't. I wish I could because people love it when you can do something like that. Yeah, it's, it's the idea of making it seamless from the speaking voice into the singing. So if you if you watch the film, um, there's this whole scene where she's telling this story about this enchanted mirror, and she has this chant, and then she has this song. But Gray is doing the chant, and I'm singing the song. But you can't really tell because it's like a seamless oh it thing right into the song. So I love that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. Is something that I, I think everybody's always interested. Let's talk about the Broadway experience. Your first Broadway show, David Engel, was La Casa Fall. And what did you play in it? Hannah from Hamburg. Now, which I, I remind us which which character that? Oh, was. she's the uh, whip wielding dominatrix. So a man plays this part. Yes, there was there. They hired twelve of us that were the Cajels. There was actually two of them were real women, but that was sort of the little fun thing about it, you had, to dis you had to try to figure out who were the men and who were the women. Uh, there were four featured casuals, all of us named David by chance. Uh, and oh my uh, God, yeah, just the what four a nightmare. <laughs> 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 there were like, like eight or nine in that whole company with everybody backstage, so it was David, everybody. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I was one of the four featured, and it was Hannah from Hamburg. And how, did, how did you get this part? Well, I had auditioned originally for Jean-Michel. Um, which is which part? The son. Oh. Which is the whole time I thought I was it's the most boring for that. Part. Really, right? Uh, well, it's the most, I guess. Most of the show, the boring, the son and the daughter are probably the most. Yeah, because they're the least colorful. They're the most real, yeah. and just yeah. kind of bland, I guess. But yes, c with when you have have all these drag queens running around and these uh, crazy characters, um, but I had auditioned out here in L.A. and then I was brought to New York. I was 23, 22, 23, and uh, wow. the whole time I was auditioning, I thought I was just auditioning for Jean-Michel, but they said, we need to see you in drag because at the very, very end of the show, we're going to... Wait, wait, wait. They asked you to put yourself in drag? Yeah, well, we need to see you come in and, and, and dance with everybody because what they were going to do at the end of the show was have Jean-Michel and Dan Don, everybody in drag, and then they get them out of the club. Right. And so they said, this is just a part we need to see you dance, come to the dance call, and we're gonna put you, we're gonna do makeup on you. Oh, they did it for you. They did, they did. Because I was and thinking so to myself, dear God, I tried to do it once for an audition, I look like an old drunk whore. <laughs> I look like I'd been beat up in an alley. It's just, uh, men's makeup and women's makeup is so different. Uh, yeah, you know what, they, we, Teddy Azar designed our makeup, well, he did their makeup on us at the audition. But we were all really young and looked pretty boy. Uh, and then I hadn't done drag in a long time after that. And when I put it back on now, I do look like a horse. You know, I do <laughs> look like a whore horse. <laughs> I look, yeah, rough. Well, that's but what Dustin Hoffman said in, in Tootsie. He said, he said, I'm not going to do this unless I can be pretty. You know, and, 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 and he wasn't. And, he no. just, and he, I guess he chose to look the other way or use a, uh, his own, I guess, lens to look at himself. But he, he just didn't want to be, I would hate to be uh, an okay looking guy and an awful looking woman. How terrible. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, yeah. I well, saw you on Broadway then in this because I saw at the original distance. I looked pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I saw yeah, the, the original. I saw the original Broadway production in New York, I w- and I stood in the back when I was a kid. So I actually saw you do this show. Yeah. You were a kid. How yeah. Sweet. Yes. Well, we, you were a kid too. We were both kids. Yeah. We're probably. Uh, you're probably we're probably close in age, I would guess, but I'm not going to say it out loud because it makes me throw up in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, what was it like? I mean, get, what was uh, who did they, do they? Uh, in those days, they called you on the phone. I'm guessing, right? The, your agents to let us know. Oh, I didn't have an agent. Uh, no, we've actually found out right there. Um, oh my that, god! That was the that was the thing. They li- it was very chorus line where they lined us up and then they went step forward. Okay, you guys, thank you, and then the rest of you. Uh, Stop we it! We start rehearsals. That was exactly it. Was oh on the, it was on the God. stage of the Lunt Fontan, even though that's not where we did it. We that's did it a, a Broadway theater, one of the most famous in New York. Yeah, the, the, the famous. Actually, I was like the top on stage. Yes, the final call was on wow. stage, and I was so confused because I I was like, oh, I got the show. What am I What am I doing in it? And then Arthur Lawrence came up to the stage, and he goes, Arthur Lawrence, who uh, wrote the way we were. Yes, he did. He and, 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 and so many Gypsy uh, and God Russell story and. Everything good. Yeah, everything. Um, but he came up to the edge of the stage and called me down. Because everybody else was like jumping up and down and excited. And I was like looking very con- confused. And he called me over and he goes, I know why we, you know, that we were seeing you for Jean-Michel, but we need somebody strong in the ensemble who can cover it. And um, we, we, we want to, we have a little feature moment for you. So anyways, so that's how I got it. Wow. And I was, I was really uh, kind of crestfallen at first because I thought I was going for Jean-Michel and then he didn't get it. But ultimately I was really happy about it. Please to come from not doing ever being on Broadway to being on Broadway, mm-hmm. and in such a, one of the most talked about shows of that season, that won the Tony. Won the Tony over did you over do Sunny in the Park. Yeah. Which I think is a better show, but that's my favorite show. But you know what? The the new version, and I'm going to be doing Lacage again. I've done Alban in Lacage uh, a bunch of times, and I'm doing it again this year, um, and it's the newer version. And it's what's uh, the difference between the newer version and the old version? Well, when they hired uh, Harvey Firestein to write the book for it originally because he was really new and hot and Torch Song Trilogy was running at the time on Broadway. One of the biggest hits, yeah. Yeah, and we were running at the same time. I used to go after our show. I'd go over to his show and I'd watch the third act of it because it was longer. But um, they hired him but kind of really in name only because Arthur forced his hand and wrote so much of it. And then the first revival of it, it was still that old script. And then after Arthur passed, Harvey rewrote the script, and it is it is a better script. So now. it's the most recent revival is the one that yeah, Harvey that really had his hand in, right? Yes, and that's and he the only acted one you and he acted out. in it, right? And he got incredible reviews. Of it was what I was told. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and it was. But an, I, it was did hear, I did hear I did hear his "I Am What I Am," which was rough. But <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I, still the I love him and if Harvey and I've met him a couple times and I forgive me but I think he's brilliant. Oh, he is. But he's not a singer. No. <laughs> and he no, wants to sing. No. I saw him and Rosie O'Donnell in uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Do you love me? I don't know. Do you love me? I mean, both of them have the same voice. I did fun. hair with with Harvey on. Um, we did for the Actors Fund on Broadway, and the the song that he was assigned was a song called Air. If you know the, the hair. Uh, score oh yeah air and it's basically about air and the man it's it sounds like someone's choking him every time he t- sings so it's hysterical that he's singing about the most free thing on the planet which is air it's like air it's like everything is like so t- it's it's just but it is incredible that he has become moments. this broadway icon of musicals and is really not a he singer one best actor in a musical for uh, um Le- uh, no, no, no. hairspray hairspray right but who yeah. can listen to the soundtrack oh I mean, I but, but I, I saw him do it, and he was wonderful. He I was love wonderful. Him. He's the best. Yeah, he's great. He's kind but of Sunday in the Park with George is probably one of my favorite all-time it's musicals. It's my all-time favorite musical. Yeah, wow. and I don't know why it's not done more. It's hard to do, and the second act has um, some major issues. I think I don't. I loved it from beginning to end. Yeah, I sat in the third row, saw Mandy Patimkin and Bernadette I can't, Peters. I can't with you. In right my now. life, I can't you're, making, you're making me I jealous. I never saw it. Oh. I was on Broadway at the time. I never saw it, okay, and I have the there DVD. Is, there Boys is and girls, DVD it's not a competition. It. <laughs> it is the best musical ever. So let's let's uh, we're going to go over just a touch if that's okay, Jake. And we're going to listen to since we're talking about La Caja, we're going to go out and see David Engel play the role that I guess was played by uh, so George, peop- Hearn, originally. George Hearn and people who know at home will know Nathan Lane who played it in the movie Birdcage Bird the non-musical version and this is uh, you doing that part with your own original twist let's 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 watch that wow. um, 
what I am. I am my own special creation. So, come take a look. Give me the hook or the ovation. It's my world that I want to have a little pride in. My world. And it's not a place I have to hide in life's not worth a damn till you can say hey world I am what I am I am what I am I don't want praise I don't want pity I bang my some think it's a noise, I think it's pretty, and so what? If I love each feather and each spangle, why not try to see things from a different angle? Your life is a sham, till you can shout out loud, I am what I am, I am what I am. I have need no excuses I deal my own deck Sometimes this Sometimes the deuces There's one life And there's no return And no deposit One life So it's time to open up your closet Life's That was really, that was a great acting performance, I think. I, it was touching to me. And Thank the you. first time I saw it, I just cried. I really did. Because it's, exa it's exactly, oh, see? Ah, it's exactly good. what that song is about. And at that time, 20 years ago, or 30 years ago, when that, mo when that came out, it was such plus. a big deal. And the, and the I, I have to say, the, pr the production was so white bread and so straight people. You know, it was the only way it could have worked at that I time. I don't we agree with right all. Right at the dawn of the AIDS crisis, yeah. it was really, it was, it's a, it was a hard I don't know. Sell. It's a, I think so, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily believe that. I think people, I think you could trick people all the time. Uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I well, I, I thought Jerry Herman was the right composer for it. It, just to make and it he's more been a big champion of yours. Mm -hmm. And he's, you've done several productions. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more Lacage. We're here with the, uh, Julie Gagné and David Engel. And I'm Jason Stewart. And we'll be back in just a second. Please stay with us. Gagné. Gagné. <laughs> I'm Laura Somoza. I'm Sterling Gardner. And we are Between the Sheets every Monday here, 3 p.m., tradiov.com. Tradiov. That's right. It's Tradiov. Radio in TV. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> he wants to see our hands. That's Radio in TV. Wah, 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 wah. We're not a couple. <laughs> Hi, I'm Holly, and this is Michael. We're on Love Life on T-Radio V every day. No! <laughs> every Tuesday. Tuesdays. Every day I try to get her to have a love life. <laughs> but every Tuesday, where you can watch us and hear us, only one place. Only hear him, though. 5 p.m. Pacific Time, T-Radio V. We're going to talk about love relationships, sex. intimacy, there'll be some sex, 
but not between us. No, I don't have sex with him. Not often. You're single, we're gonna share with you what to do if you just want booty calls or be in a relationship. Oh, you know you like booty calls. I do. <laughs> What's it like to be in a relationship? We always say you have to be a strong me before you can be a great we. One place, right here, Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on T Radio V, right? Yep. Cool. Andy D on T Radio V. Bing bang bing boom, right? Yeah. Andy D on T Radio V. Bobbity bibbity bobbity boom. Andy D on T Radio V. The Andy Dick Show, Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Wow! So but Paul, we'll do it. We'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no. About it, because what you're doing is you're. Oh, you're on. Oh, hey. <laughs> Are we on the air yet? Okay, and we're back. <laughs> was that on the air? Oh, we're back. That was terribly wrong. I will Your last sentence was sorry, man. That's okay. We're having a little technical difficulties here today. Um, Oh, man. Okay, so we're back with uh, David Engel and uh, Julie Gagné, and we're talking on Absolutely Jason Stewart. We were having some off-the-chat. We were talking about buyer and seller. I'm just going to say it. So I love the play, and I think the playwright is brilliant. Yes, I saw his other Jones. And I saw the, the, the uh, Twilight of the Golds, loved it from yeah. beginning to end. I think he's a brilliant play mm-hmm. playwright. But that, I think there is, Barbara Streisand is a real person, and there's something about that play that you're, uh, he says at the beginning, this is not true. We're making mm-hmm. a play about a person, right? And it's not her experience, and she's still alive. Yes. And we're deciding who this person is in a play, and then we're making it real. And I think there's something about that that's just wrong in our society that we're so doing that. Mm-hmm. It's so it, it it is what reality television is. Is we're we're deciding, you know, we're we're putting something out into the yes, it's not really real. It's no, we're, but we're, I think we're making it. But real. he's so good in it, and he was so brilliant. Oh yeah, Michael was Michael brilliant Yuri in is it. amazing. And I know that she, this is this. They make it sound like she's a sad woman that lives in a basement and no, doesn't no, talk to no. anybody, oh. and, and she's so self and and and. and it well, the reason we're talking about this and we uh, on the break we were oh, talking sure. about it is because my theater company in Palm Springs, Coyote Stage Works, just produced this. Um, our Starring actor. Emerson Collins, who's Starring amazing. Emerson I, Collins. I, 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 love I, Emerson I went Collins. online and read about it. It got incredible reviews. Incredible reviews. And he is he was unbelievable. Larry, my partner, Larry Raven, directed it impeccably. <laughs> I did all the projections. It was a beautiful production. And I am in love with the piece. It's a great and play. So I... I, it doesn't make her sad, and honestly, well, Barbara Boxer actually came to the show, and she mm-hmm. is a character in the show as well. She had never seen it, but she was having Seder dinner with Barbara the next with Barbara the next night, and she says, "I'm going to tell her to come see it." And I know oh, okay. how is that possible? It. Yeah, no, but she was, but she thought the the show paid homage to Barbara, and it it. Well, it does, and, and but it also the way makes Emerson her seem did like it, I must say because I talked to j- some people about it. I'm not going to say who, but I talked to, s- and basically, sh- that is not her. She's an incredibly social person. She has an incredible amount of friends, and she has a great marriage. The, the show, d- the play, does not say that she's not social. It makes it sound like she's paying someone to talk to her because she's so lonely. No, but that's what I saw when I saw it. Huh? Not at all. No, no. Maybe no. it was Jonathan. Just Jonathan uh, Tolins. He he was like, does somebody work down there? What 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 does she have this whole ba- this whole basement cellar mall, uh, just for her stuff? And so he just thought of the idea. Well, if she hired uh, someone who had to man the shops, and it's just the relationship. It's just their personal relationship. What goes on? It's not. It she has a whole life and world above. Ground. Above ground, it's when she goes down there with him that's the relationship. But it's not that she just needed somebody to talk to it at all, or that she stays below ground twenty four seven. No, it not sounded at all. like it made it <laughs> sound it's like it's it was like Gloria Swanson going down there, like oh, no. she's a and, recluse. And honestly, the way Emerson played this, and I, I loved Michael Urie, and I thought, my God, who could ever do this better than him? And he was fabulous. But I love how Emerson makes the Barbara character. Very, it, it, it very warm and sweet, and their relationship is really very loving with each other. Well, because Emerson's such a warm, sweet guy, oh my God. I think he just brings and so much so of himself. So different actors, different does. performances, oh, different sure. point of view. Yeah. yeah, they're friends. They both have been talking to each other the whole time. Who, him and Michael? Michael? Yeah, yeah. Michael's on tour with it, and Emerson is doing it for us, and they're like 
Michael's doing it in London right now, I think, right? Oh, wow. he's, he's in Chicago. In Chicago? Oh, I think okay. he's in Chicago. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. So what is what it, what what are you going to be doing next at the theater company? Uh, we haven't announced our season yet. The thing is, we've just moved venues, and we had to do a whole restructuring. Uh, do you live out in Palm Springs? I do not. Oh. But uh, my partner, Larry, his best friend, Chuck Yates. Partner, boyfriend, partner? Partner, married, husband, uh, husband boyfriend, partner, partner, whatever you call it. It's so complicated. And years and years. It's so complicated, isn't it? What is, who is this partner? Is it partner? I'm married to him in one state, but not the other. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, we, we've, been, uh, we've been friends for 26 years. We've been married. No, we've been together for 22. He was in the original um, Forever Plaid with me. That's where we met. Aww. And we have been married. It'll be seven this year. We got married in that little window of time there. Oh, you're the uh, chosen few. Yeah. You're the ones that push the Jews out. Is that, was that us? Because <laughs> yeah. we used to be the chosen people, and then oh, yeah, you us, became the right. chosen people. Yeah, we, everybody, everybody has the same anniversary in that little, little that window little there. Window. So I'm gonna, uh, let me talk to you. Oh, so but anyways, no, oh, go ahead. Say, so he started that theater company. Chuck Yates started the theater company. He lives out oh, there. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Chuck Yates. Um, yeah, he was a TV writer, uh, actor and everything, but he, he moved out there, and his dream is to start this theater company. And... Uh, so we're on the board, and so we are we are traveling out there all the time. Larry and I used to go out there to get away from things, and now every time we drive there, it's we're going into work mode because we, you know, we're in Duke Coyote Stage Works. Maybe time to get a Springs place. Maybe time to get a place. I know. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> well, you I always thought we would reti we retire there, but I also love it here. It's so. hard. It's hard to know where. So you were on Susical on Broadway. No, no, I was. You were I in Susical. Oh, I'm sorry. You, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your your Broadway show? Was Hair. And chess. Uh huh. I did the I did the Actors Fund concerts of Hair and Chess. Oh I've never wow. actually done eight shows a week on Broadway yet. So w w when they when they, what are those? Tell us what those are because I'm not at all. Yeah. Okay. So it used to Seth Rodetsky, who we were talking about uh -huh. earlier. Um, he used to do these incredibly huge concerts once a year to benefit Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. Oh yes, yes, yes. And how many shows do you do that? Just one? Just the one night. Oh, it was God. a one night only. Tickets were astronomically expensive, mm -hmm. and all the money went to BCEFA. And oh. um, so they did. They did Dream Girls, where every single scene they did Dream Girls. They had a different woman playing Effie. Oh, they I did, love it that! It was incredible. Like the, the, these concerts were amazing, and he put a lot of love and effort and into star -studded. them. Star-studded. And star-studded. Yeah. So uh, the first one that well, the reason that I moved to New York was actually there were a lot of composing teams that were writing audition demos for the new Legally Blonde musical, and um, Henry and you were in the original. I, I did the readings for three years and uh, before they went to Broadway. I did not end up completing the, the circle of that. Were you the same character? No, I actually played every single female character, including Elle Woods. I did Elle Woods for a couple of readings. Um, I did the only character I did not play is Paulette. Oh, gosh, and that seems like that perfect seems like, I know. for you. I know. For a while, there, I was playing the lesbian. I was playing Enid, Enid for a while. Oh, yeah. I, I just did it. My last show was Legally oh, Blonde. Was yeah, it? was Callahan in it. Oh, yeah. of course. Who's Callahan? Was. Callahan is the lecherous... The Pro, uh, teacher yes. at Harvard. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Law school Law teacher. Law school teacher. Yeah. Where'd you do it? In Palm Springs. Oh, how nice. I was <laughs> at Equity Guest Artist Things. I did it just before Buyer and Seller. Anyways, sorry. Awesome. Yeah. No, Continue. it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Um, so that's why I moved to New York was to do um, the audition demo recording of three songs for Legally Blonde for Henry Krieger, who wrote Dream Girls. Um, so and Broadway is just around the corner for you. I, I, if it happens, it's great. I mean, I you, you know, have to be I, in New York, I would guess. No, not necessarily. And I <coughs> kept my place there, so I fly back there all the time. I'm oh. always auditioning for stuff there. And um, every Broadway show I got, I got uh, from here. Me, I you know I auditioned. The, the big show that I did was Cats. I did Cats um, on tour. Can we show that picture of her and Cats? Oh, you have pictures of me and Cats. That's, well, that's not Ricky Lake. That, that's not me. That's that actually I understudied her. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so Gretchen. funny that I would pick that. Because well, they were under that's your Gretchen name. Goldsworthy. Yeah, she was our first that Grizabella. That is so funny. But um, but I have pictures of me on my phone as Grizabella. Because uh, people always because well, people are like I, I can't believe said I did that's it. Me. <laughs> that's <laughs> why I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I thought no, that was you because they were I started out as Jenny Annie Dots. your name under uh, Google Images. Really? People, it, wow, it's, it's people it, make mistakes. I love that. They make tons of mistakes. Um, yeah, I started out as <laughs> Jenny Annie Dots. And, um, and under, so it was the first understudy, first cover for, for Grizz. So if she ever went out, I was always the one that went on. And then um, and then I went on a lot. I went on a lot. <laughs> so, you were, so you were an understudy on Broadway? No, I never did Cats on Broadway. It was oh, a national the tour. tour. Oh, it was a national tour, I which is a Broadway tour. tour. Yeah. I'm trying to get tour. you on Broadway. Somehow. I know, I know. <laughs> you and me both, honey. You Somehow. and me both. And then you did Full Monty. Now, where did you do that? Uh, that was music. Oh, I've done it a couple times. I did it. And you really have to take off all your clothes? Yeah. Were you fine about that? Yeah. 
It's good lighting. It is good lighting. It's not <laughs> like you're just kind of out there. Except the first time I did it, uh, I played Jerry. And that was in Florida. And it was a smaller theater. And it was thrust, <gasps> so to speak. Thrust. Uh, it was a thrust theater. So Holy people God. sat on the side. <coughs> the very last thing. It's uh, y y The only time you are fully naked is for the very last moment. And they blast you with light from the back. Um, and so you're... You were just silhouetted from the front, but the people on the sides, and that's where everybody wanted yeah. to sit. <laughs> uh, so I just got used to it pretty quickly. And the next time I did it, I played Harold. So I've done it twice. Wow. And you get to see all the other guys naked, too. Yes, but, you know, I, yeah, I could go to the gym, <laughs> see that, and then see, you know, my cohorts. You have to look look side to side to see them. <laughs> Otherwise, we look straight forward. I hate nudity in the theater, right? Because I think it's just, I think we're not, we just can't handle it. I just think it's just too weird because then it becomes about that. You know, it just becomes so much about that that you're watching, especially if you're watching someone make love, you go, oh, well, that penis. Hey, guys, this show's awesome, but please talk into your mics. I'm trying to get you to the table, oh. like, into oh, your mics. Yeah. Thank Nobody you. He told me that to That's start. Jake. Yes, I, I, he doesn't like anything. Um, oh, Is I mine? See. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. I was not talking into my mic? Oh, my God. This is, well, this is unusual for me. It's usually like this, and somehow mine is limp. Uh, speaking of limp, uh, no, so the one show that I thought, I mean, because I think nudity is distracting. I mean, personally, I love nudity, but, but it is, it does take you out of the play a bit. You're not listening to it as much as you're watching and just being, or This or, is Jake, everyone. He's it. now on my hey show. Jay. We're having another technical difficulty. Hey, everybody. <coughs> apparently, oh, one, uh, one apparently uh, we're just, we've got a new guy and a new thing and a new gal and everything's new this has never happened before on the show but this is where the guy is coming to fix the mic but i guess this is a new thing now are we fixed yeah we're fixed and Where we're ready go? to go and, no. and and we're like backstage at the radio yeah. station in front of everybody <laughs> so did you see take me out on broadway yes now that show it wasn't gratuitous it was about that it was right and they weren't the having community. sex yeah it was weird. No, oh no, and I, I haven't seen a lot of actual. But what's really acts. weird about it is everybody was in such perfect shape, and those, that's not baseball players. So it seemed totally unreal because baseball players are usually a little chunky, you know. So it, it they're not all like that. They're they're more guy yeah, body. Yeah, athletes. I, I yeah, went with that. You, you look at the boys. Half of them have stomachs, and they're not that they're not that guy. So you're watching a show about some gay guy's version of what this is supposed to be. And then I get, to, then I, that's what I'm thinking about when I'm watching it, and it takes me out of the play. Well, that's the thing. Because like I'd rather just watch porn. Because hair and like hair at the Hollywood Bowl, you know, like in the 60s and the hippies, they were not all groomed up, all manscaped and all, <laughs> and all chiseled and all that. Everybody was just more just natural and free. But well, it's usually, it takes it's, a, it's, a, it's a gay guy's version, and then you get, mm -hmm. your mind leaves the play, and you start getting into that. Because it it, people don't do things that are true to the, the play. It's, it's, that's why I have trouble with it. It, it, it. it takes my mind someplace else. And I want to watch the play and see. And I think Take Me Out is a brilliant play. And, uh, and Full Monty, it's about the nudity. And it's about, you know, so it, the very last moment of it is is victorious and, you know, and then the audience is, is rooting for the guys and everything mm -hmm. and it, it, but uh, it's about that and it isn't it's it a isn't fun gratuitous. thing no, it, it no I, think, I think in that play it probably works the best since then since I did it um, I, uh, I had spinal surgery so I have a seam that runs up my back that's 13 inches long and I went okay that's it I'm done with the nude stuff <laughs> <laughs> wow I mean, it's, but not, that's it's not like a Frankenstein me, scar. It's just a To scene, me, that's perfect like, okay. for the real Monty. Because well, he's a real guy. Yeah, because you're not playing a model. You're not playing a... Right. Girl, you're not playing a... And even a baseball player would... Ha so, that's a, so for me, that's, that would be cool. Yeah, but then it... Then it, then it uh, if it's not addressed, I don't know, so to speak. Uh, if it's like not... why does that guy have a scar? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, you know, that can take you out of it, too. But... Because there is the one scene, the underwear scene in it, where everybody's walking around in under underwear trying to get used to being naked around each other. So I'd still be, I would have to be, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I decided, so we well actually what I want to do is. We don't feel comfortable with nudity in this I country. Wanna, I want to tattoo my scar, not to cover it, but more to adorn it. Just, just to do something with it. Um, and so anyways, I'm done. Tell with us nudity. about working with Carol Burnett and uh, putting it together. She's as <laughs> delightful as you would hope. She is so generous and giving and wonderful um when did you do it with her <coughs> well it was it was in the 90s am i correct it was on broadway in 2000 i think 1999 uh -huh. or 2000 that's when we did it yeah. we started it out here that's why i say I, I auditioned out here for it mm -hmm. and i and i did it out here at the taper and then we took it to new york 
Um, and she is fantastic. And every night at intermission, we'd have a party in her dressing room. We'd all get ready for the second act, and we'd just come and sit in her dressing room. We'd just all yammer, and it was just it was something I just... Who's that? That's okay, now that is another David Engel actor from Chicago. That's not you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't get these from your publicist. I had to that's me on the right. That was yes. last year in... Uh, the uh, the stage benefit, the stage benefit. Jeffrey you Parsons that was and a great I. Number. You look Thank terrific. You. Wonderful. Number. We worked so hard on that. Well, that one is me. So yeah, that pirate. <laughs> he okay. he and I get each other's. Uh, he 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 gets me more than I get him. I mean, you know, a lot of people thinking that you're him. I'm you. him. Yeah. Then then me. I thought that was you doing a, a play or something. That what a great costume. No, this he's show a, he's has been an a, actor in Chicago. This has been a total fiasco in terms of my. <laughs> That's I, me. Good gosh. Oh, that is you. Where are these pulled from? I, they're on uh, Google, Google images. images. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What's next? Oh, so I haven't That's been watching. Why Maybe you've been showing other pictures. Do, do neither uh, of us no, no. ever Google ourselves? I don't Google myself, so I don't know what. No, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm I know about me. <laughs> so, so I don't. <laughs> what is this show? Oh my gosh, this was leading ladies. Uh, a, sh a play I did, uh, and uh, oh, I'm not talking into the mic. Good heavens! Okay, sorry. <laughs> I gotta like, touch the mic. Um, anyways, yes. So uh, we we have to dress up as women. I'm often in drag, often. Really? It's yes. You're adorable. A lot. There was one year. It was this year. It was the year I did that. It was a few years ago. It was like every single show I did that year, I was in and out of drag, at least one time in the show. Oh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I, just I didn't realize there were so many sh musicals that you could do with drag, or plays. Yeah, there there are a lot. Oh. I just did. I just did at uh, the um, at the Pasadena Playhouse. <laughs> I did the uh, Winter Panto, um, which was Sleeping Beauty in her Winter Night, and it's a traditional English panto. And in every panto, there are there is a character that's the dame character. It's a female played by a man. It's usually the wicked stepmother or something. But I played Nanny Tickle, Aurora's nanny, uh, and I was drag. Yeah. And that was the first time I'd actually played a woman. Usually I play a man in a dress or, you know, Gosh. Yeah, trying to trying to pull off being a woman. But this is actually, I played a woman. You don't, you don't uh, tip it off. Now, when you did Wonderful Town off-Broadway, was that... that I was didn't do it off-Broadway. I did the oh, uh, it on encores. It was the pre-Broadway... Uh, was it with Leah Delaria? N no, that was on the town. This was oh, Wonderful okay, Town. Oh, it okay. Before it went to Broadway. And then I didn't do the Broadway one, and I, 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 I it was it was because I, I, I wanted to cover the the lead, and they were not willing to give it to me, and I just didn't want to do ensemble. I wanted to come back here because I actually love living out here in California, mm -hmm. and I go back. I'll, I'll I'll go to New York if 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 I get a job that I really yeah, want to do. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. What is what is chess? What is chess? Yeah, tell us that musical. What is that one? Chess is a, it's about um, it's about competitive chess playing. Um, it was written by the guys who wrote uh, who, the the guys from ABBA, the two gentlemen. Oh ABBA. yeah, 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 um, yeah. Incredible okay. score. Anthem yeah. is from that. I mean, it's just uh, you know uh, someone else's story. Did Larry do that with you, Larry, Larry Rabin? I think he did. I think he was in there. No, no, uh, that that one night concert thing. I don't know. It was in New York. It right? was yeah. no, it wasn't actually. Oh. Sorry, it wasn't. It was Billy Porter, Josh Groban. I love Billy yeah. Porter. Um, yeah, Larry was in that Larry as well. Yeah, it? he he was in it. I mean, he wasn't was he featured in, the, in it. I don't was think. Was in the ensemble? Yeah, I was in the ensemble. We were in the ensemble together. We were together. Didn't yeah. even know that there was a lot of ensemble. Didn't know there was each like other an eighty-person choir. Mm -hmm. It was insane. It was crazy and amazing. Um, it was an incredible night, and um, I got stuck <coughs> in an elevator with Josh Groban on our first day of rehearsal, <laughs> which was awesome. Did he sing to you? No, I wish he in the elevator. He's elevator single. He was single. He was then. He's not now. Ah. He's I just saw him on Who Do You Think You Are? Oh, I love him so much. He's just a funny, Is wonderful he? human being. Uh, he's he lovely. seemed very happy. He's a sweet guy. Okay. Now you also did La Miserable. Now who I did, did you Les Mis, I, And you yeah. did the Hollywood Bowl. Uh huh. When they yeah. do the highlights of just the music, isn't it? No, actually, we did the whole show. We did oh have to cut a God. little bit from it. Um, what did you, who did you? Did you play? I was in the ensemble. Oh, did yeah. you, you didn't play the the prostitute who's uh, I guess the Anne Hathaway role now we call it. No, right? that was actually Melora Hardin from The Office. Wow. She played that role. She's fantastic. Melora can sing. That woman can sing. Wow. Yeah, it was Melora Hardin. It was um it was um uh oh my god, Leah Michelle. Um John Lloyd Young who had just won the Tony Award for um for uh, Jersey Boys. Now, is Le Leah Michelle really a, uh, she see, why does she get such a bad rep do you think? I didn't I don't I didn't I, don't I didn't know, know that she did. I don't know. <laughs> I just, that's all I ever hear about, I guess, because I watched. I used to watch that fashion. That she's difficult? 
Or I mean, I had a lovely time with yeah. her, so I can't. I have nothing. Maybe it's because I say. watched too much Fashion Police when Joan Rivers was on. Oh, Joan. <laughs> God oh, bless she her. ragging on. God bless her. No, yeah, no. I mean, was was so let's talk about months. this one more time. So Saturday, <laughs> May seventh. At 7.30 at the Saban Theater, you can go see two Broadway from Hollywood with love, and you're going to see some of the most incredible singers, plus these two incredible people right here, and you're going to be able to get to see everyone from Sally, uh, I guess, Struthers to Sally Kellerman to Gregory Harrison, who I haven't seen, to Thea Gale. I didn't oh, know he's so good. Gregory's great. Gregory's wonderful. He's really got oh, chops. I saw him on, um, I d- saw him do Follies on Broadway. It's just delicious. Oh yeah, I saw it. He he still right? he yeah, I saw he it. He's amazing. He's so handsome too. Oh my gosh, still. He's everything. He's so yummy. Still. Is and Sally Struthers is the real deal, and I think people here oh. in California know, yeah. but I think so many people don't yeah. know. They, they don't, don't know. They know her yeah. as, you know, Gloria Stivic from All in the Family. I think they don't know her. She sing. She sings and she is brilliantly funny. Yeah. Larry's about to go I direct her a nice work if you can get it at, at Gateway Theater in New York and Ogunquit oh, in Maine. Great. Oh, wow. She's gonna be doing she that. does a lot of theater. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. And she's, uh, she's. I think she's gifted. She is. Yeah. And a doll. What she's are, a what sweetheart. What are you doing this summer? Um, I have... You <laughs> no? I, I have... Okay, I, I, okay, I have... You have, I have a thing? I have things offered and I have possibility things okay. that I might get that I... So I can't really say yet. So you're waiting. You've got the thing. I, mean, I do I'm have things. I'm doing something, and I want to do it with you if you're available. Oh, what is it? I'm doing Aldonza in Man of La Mancha. Also Where? At PCPA Theater Fest up in Solvang. So we, are we oh, basically oh, having a, a we're having a thing here? Well, I mean, we, we apparently they lost their Don Quixote, and they're looking for they're looking for a Cervantes for me. And when I, is it? Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> we start rehearsals May 26th. I don't know. They might have found somebody. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn. You're I on. You're actually. I do expect that I am working then. Okay. It would just be so much fun to work. We opened July 18th, but it would be really fun to work with you at some point. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's a straight play that you wanted to do, what play would you want to do at your theater oh, company? Straight. Oh, that I would want to be yeah. in myself. Yeah. Mm, I, I, I don't know. You know what? As far as... Uh, so I'd love to do Take Me Out, and you know what part I'd love to play? The accountant. The, yes. The, the what, who, who played that originally? What's um, his name? Um, Dennis O'Hare. Yes, Dennis who's O'Hare. brilliant. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be doing Take Me Out. I lo- <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just a play that I've always wanted to do. Yeah, well. I've, I've been up for it a couple times. I'm always like. The yeah, you don't uh, have to take it close. Th- the, second, the second choice. <gasps> yeah. Because I don't be physically perfect. look like what they want. They want some. Usually the guy that gets it is thin and frail and more right. looks like him. Right, right, right. Yeah, they always. Broadway seems to always want the same person, you know. Oh, the event is May 9th. Did I say, uh, did I say the wrong date? Uh, the, the event is May 9th. I don't know. I thought you all agreed with me. Oh, 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 so I whatever I said. I think we were excited that you were talking about the event. It was May 10th last year. maybe. May 9th. It's May 9th, everyone. May 9th <laughs> at the Saban Theater. And if you want tickets, you go to, uh, let's see, uh, why not you go to uh, stagela.com and you can get your tickets. And, and it always sells out. And it, oh, so it you should get them in advance. Out. Always. And all the money goes to APLA, AIDS Project Los Angeles. Which is probably one of the best... Uh, organizations here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, they've yeah, been here, s- oh, they've been here since the beginning of a- HIV and AIDS, and they have uh, helped everyone. Yeah. Uh, and this is the 31st consecutive year of this benefit raising money. It's the for longest running AIDS benefit in the world. In the world. And stage, what does this stand for? Southland Theater. Oh, uh, oh gosh. I, I can't Who's hosting yeah, this event? Shouldn't there be a person hosting it? Well, it's, I mean, it's directed by David Galligan. Who Always. He, he's directed every single one, all 31. It was his idea to do this. But who's, years who's ago. opening the show and introducing the people? It's, it isn't, it, uh, is it isn't host always hosted? hosted. No, no. no, it's no. Not always it's hosted. But they need a host. No. No. Vying for a job here. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what you're doing. <laughs> they might have a, the the voice of God. They might like have a you know. I don't like the voice of God. I like a real person. <laughs> you know, uh, like uh, last year, uh, the theme. I can't remember what the theme was. I did. It was a Holly- Hollywood theme oh, as well. That's right. And um, Robert Osborne uh, did host. That he was did amazing. Host. Oh and, wow. Uh, we did. We did a whole Fred Astaire tribute in there, and Ava Astaire, which is uh, uh, Fred's <laughs> daughter. And Robert hosted the that seg- segment, and that's what I did with. Were him. you sad that he didn't win the Oscar for Towering Inferno? Was he nominated? 
<laughs> yes, that's the only thing he's ever been nominated for as an kidding? actor. Oh, yeah, I have no. a mind full of stuff that no yes, one. Yes, no I one did could. love him in that. I loved because I was all about that's entertainment at the time, oh. and to see you know Fred Astaire actually still up there working and that. So well, I they know. were all d- all the big stars of that era were doing disaster films. Yeah. my favorite, of course, was Gloria Swanson playing herself in, in Air Airport seventy five. Airport, yes, Airport. You know, well, this is really great. I can't thank you both enough for being on the show. You're both I- ten times more interesting than your publicist said. I mean, oh, okay. y- you know what I mean. I, I and I'm so excited. Please go to see the show once again. It's Saturday, May 9th, at the uh, Savant Theater in Beverly Hills, and they can go to stagela.com to get your tickets, and it will sell out. So please do that. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for being here. Thank and you. Uh, if people need to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? You mean personally? Yeah, for if, if somebody says, I want to hire this guy, they go to davidengel.com? No, I don't even have that. I told you we, we talked before this. Oh, I not even a, a website? <laughs> self-promotion. No, I don't have any of it. I, I'm on Facebook. Okay. F- uh, Facebook for you? and Oh, everything. Instagram, Twitter, okay. LinkedIn. And if you need to get a hold of Dave, Jason, Jason Stewart, just go to uh, David Engel. Go to jasonstewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T. Please don't forget to watch the web series Mentor. We won an award last week for the Indie Series Award. Alexander Paul won Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy. Uh, please watch our show. Thank you so much yeah. until next week. And we will be technically better next week. So everybody, please keep tuning in. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. He's absolutely Jason, he's absolutely gay He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day He's funny and loves movies, he's smart and he's a Jew He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear from you You are watching to Radio Me, Radio MTV